Hey, Jen. Thank, thank each of you for being here. There may be some others come, but we'll go ahead and get started. The title of the message that Sherry's referred to is See Through God's Eyes. Uh, God looks at things from a different perspective than, uh, than the human uh, mind wants to look at people. And, and uh, so we're supposed to imitate God. So let's be like God and see how he sees people. And, and really, this message was birthed out of uh, a couple of things that the Lord shared with me this past uh, mm. few days. And I always start, uh, as I'm thinking about the uh, message for uh, the Tuesday night with each of you, I, I, I always ask the Lord, what does he want to say uh, to you? So uh, it's not that I just have something I want to share with you. It's it's what does he want to uh, say to you? And that's the way I always uh, begin the process. And and that in itself is related to tonight, uh, to tonight's message. But one of the things that happened in the last few days is that Sherry and I have been praying for a young man who uh, for, we've been praying for him for months. Uh, he was in an automobile accident, a head-on collision, and he was almost dead. Uh, and so he's in the process of uh, recovering and God is restoring him uh, to his health uh, and he is in a, a clinic uh, where they are working with him with therapy but what related to him was the Lord said he has a destiny and I'm sure the people around him and even his family uh, would not think about destiny, that he has a destiny. Well, uh, God knew him uh, in before foundation, in eternity. He knew him, that particular man, but, but this relates to all of us, of course. And uh, he had a purpose for that man. That man's name is Michael. And, and so God had a purpose for Michael in eternity. And what the Lord said to me was that that his destiny has not changed. God saw things. And even though he's been in this uh, terrible automobile accident, that didn't change his destiny. God knew things beforehand and he just called him into destiny. And what God told us to do for Michael was to speak to his spirit man. Mm. And this relates to all of us. And particularly, I'm going to be talking about family tonight and our relationships with uh, our spouse, our children, our parents, our siblings, uh, and, and we need to be like God. In uh, 1 Samuel 16, I believe it's verse 7, that uh, is the verse I want to get to, but he sent Samuel down to uh, anoint a king over Israel. He was sent him to Jesse's house, and, and all of these young uh, bright looking young men, handsome men, strong men came and they were paraded before Samuel and Samuel thought, oh, surely this is the one. Surely this is the one. And, and God said, no, that, that's not the one I chose. Oh, and the next one, <laughs> you know, he's a tall, a good looking young man, uh, strong and smart looking, bright eyed. Surely this is the one. But God said in the seventh verse, he, he said, I don't look at people. Mm -hmm. uh, like man looks at them. I, I look at their heart. Mm -hmm. and, and so th this relates, of course, to Michael, that God was still looking at his heart. God had a purpose for him. Uh, regardless of what Michael did or didn't do, the destiny still stands. Well, that's the same thing uh, for you and for your mm -hmm. spouse and for your children. God foreknew each of those people uh, in eternity before he created the world, and uh, he had a destiny for them, and even if they have gone off in some other direction, the destiny is still there, mm -hmm. and our role uh, is to speak to the spirit man, to look inside the spirit man, uh, and that's the reason I'm talking about uh, Samuel here. Samuel was looking at the outward appearance, and that's what we want to do, and that's what we want to do with our family. We want to look at their outward appearance. We want to look at their faults. 
We want to look at all of the problems and all of the things they have done wrong and, and uh, their sins. But let's think about this for a moment. The, this message is about see through God's eyes. God's not looking at the outward appearance. God is not looking at the faults of your spouse, at the faults of your children, at the faults uh, of your siblings. <laughs> Where is he looking? He's looking on the inside right. because he put something on the inside of them uh, and, and he called out a purpose uh, for each of those people uh, in eternity, long, long, long ago, before time began. They already had a destiny. And so we need to see like God sees and look at the inner person. Uh, and that's very important. We can't look, be like natural people and look at their outward appearance mm. because there we will only see their faults and their uh, shortcomings mm. and, and the hurts that they've caused us in the past. But you know, Luke chapter 6, verse 37 says, judge not. Uh, mm. so that you won't be judged. And so if we look at our spouse or our children or our siblings with all of the faults, all of the problems that they have, then we have judged them. And mm. who made you a judge? Jesus said, do not judge or you will be judged. Mm -hmm. Do not condemn or you will be condemned. See, if you're looking at their faults, and you can look, if you're wanting to see a fault, you can look right here at me and say, oh, Freddie's got faults. He's, he's got all these faults. But don't look. Don't look. Don't judge. Don't judge your family members. Don't judge me. Don't judge. Who made you a judge? He said, don't judge, or you will be judged. Don't condemn or you will be condemned. condemned. Forgive, and you will, will be, be forgiven. forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now, we know that you are in Christ. You've accepted Jesus Christ, and so as your Lord and Savior, so you're in Christ. And Ephesians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 7, says that in him, in Christ, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. So it's by the blood our sins are forgiven. Mm -hmm. Now we know <clears throat> that we've all committed sins and that we'll commit sins in the future, but, but we're not supposed to look at the sins. What are we supposed to look at? What's, what does God look at? When he sees you, what does he look at? He sees the blood. Mm -hmm. He sees Christ. Mm -hmm. You're in Christ. He doesn't look at your at your sins. And I think about something I heard uh, Kenneth Hagin say one time. He was a minister I, I listened to a lot uh, years ago. And uh, he said he saw this other minister sin. He saw him sin. He knew without uh, any uh, hesitation or any doubt that that man had sinned. And, and so he was talking to God and he said, uh, why are you blessing that man? I saw him sin. He committed this sin. And God said, I have no record that he has sinned. I have no remembrance that he sinned. Uh, when, he miss, when he misses me, when he, when he sins, he immediately, I, 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 I convict him by my spirit and he repents. Mm -hmm. And so I have no, no record that he has sinned. It, it's gone into, his sins have been separated from him as far as east is from the west, and they've been cast into the sea of forgetfulness. And, and, and Kenneth Hagin, you see, he had said, well, but I saw him sin. I, I know he sinned. But God said, sins are separated yeah. from him as far as east is from the west. I have no remembrance of it because he is quick to ask for forgiveness, to repent and ask for forgiveness, okay? So how do we see people? How are we supposed to see people? How are we supposed to see our spouse? 
How are we supposed to see our children? See, if you are in Christ, you've accepted Christ, then all of your situations and circumstances, you approach those in Christ. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. in Christ. Mm -hmm. So you're, you approach your husband in Christ and you can't look at his sins. Don't look at his sins. Don't look at all of the things he's done. Don't look at your wife. Don't look at all the things she's done. Mm -hmm. uh, don't look at your children, all the things they've done. Look at them like God sees that person. Look at each person as God sees those person. And God sees them through the blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the blood of Jesus, he sees them through Christ. And so that's a different way of looking at people. Now, what I'm getting to here is that we want to have people clean themselves up. We want them to stop sinning. We want them to stop uh, doing all of these things. But <clears throat> I'm going to ask Sherry to read Galatians 6 1. And, and it doesn't matter what they've done, it doesn't matter what they have done. Let's look at Galatians 6 1 and see what it says. It says, Brothers and sisters, and I'm reading out of the New Standard, um, New, New American. American Standard. Brothers and sisters, even if a person is caught in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual are to restore that person in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to your, yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Okay, let's let's just think about this scripture. It says, if they're caught, caught in any mm -hmm. wrong wrongdoing, doing. it's just like Kenneth Hagin said, I saw that man did, did that thing. I, I saw him do it. I, I know it was a fact. He did that thing. He sinned. And this says, if you catch them, if you catch a person in any wrongdoing, okay, so what's going to happen? And we know if you look at, uh, long enough at your children, you're going to find them, you're going to be able to catch them in some wrongdoing. Yeah, doing or something. you might find your spouse, you might catch your spouse in some wrongdoing. How are we supposed to approach that? It says, you who are spiritual. So I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to everyone. Here every one of us. Listening. You who are spiritual, restore Hallelujah. such a one. Hallelujah. Okay. So what, what we're going to talk about tonight is how to restore people who have been caught in wrongdoing. Any wrongdoing. It maybe it's a little wrongdoing. Maybe it's a big wrongdoing. Any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual are to restore. And so how do we restore? Well, I think about three different ways we could restore. Uh, one thing, we could destroy any evil. Mm, we could mm. destroy evil. You know, Jesus came first. John 3, mm, 8 mm. says Jesus, the son of God was manifested Vested to destroy the works of the, the devil. devil. So destroy is a possibility. And then 1 John 4, 17 says that as he is, so are we. And so he came to destroy the works of the devil. We come to destroy the works of the mm, devil. Hallelujah, so that's the hallelujah. first thing we could do. If, if we're dealing with a family member, and they've been caught in wrongdoing. We've seen them. Have we've seen them? We've caught them. We know. Maybe we caught them in a lie. Maybe we caught them uh, uh, stealing something. Maybe we caught them. Maybe they were caught. Uh, you, you know, I've been called uh, by the police to come and uh, mm -hmm. get my children because they were they had done some things that were wrong. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, they were caught. Yes, they were caught. Yes, and, and so I could have said, "Well, just throw them in jail and and uh, um, throw, throw away the key, key. throw away the key." <laughs> but, but I didn't. You know what my <laughs> responsibility is is to restore. Yes, and so we're going to talk about restore. And one thing we could do is destroy, destroy the, the works. works. So God might be uh, wanting you to destroy something in their life. The second way is to remove something, remove a problem uh, that they are experiencing. You know, Mark eleven twenty three 23 says, 
uh, truly, truly, I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this, this mountain, mountain, be thou removed, and uh, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe those things which he said, uh, that shall come to pass. So what you say, so you can remove things, mm -hmm. uh, remove things out of the, you are spiritual, and you're supposed to restore your family members. Hallelujah. You're supposed to restore your co-workers and you're supposed to restore your neighbors and you're supposed to restore because you are spiritual and i've told you two ways to do it uh you you might destroy the works of the devil you might uh, and be just like jesus destroy the works of the devil or you might remove problems out of their lives or the third way and this is really the one that we're going to focus on tonight this is about creating something creating something in their life and if uh, they are let's say the person we're talking about we're talking to, let's say a person in your family i want you to think about a particular person in your family and and let's say they've been caught in some wrongdoing they've done something maybe they've hurt you maybe they've said something to hurt you uh, and so you obviously you've caught them in doing something that was wrong or, or, or maybe they've done something else Okay, so you think about that person for a moment as, as I'm talking about it. Uh, and, and we're not supposed to judge them. We're not supposed to condemn them. <clears throat> but we can create something in their life. Create. Maybe, maybe they lack something. A and let's think about God uh, for a moment. And he dealt with a man named Abram and his wife. Okay, so he dealt with Abram, and, and he said the, the name Abram uh, means exalted father. So it means father. So Abram, uh, his name meant father, and God promised him a son. And uh, the son, uh, we, we know eventually, becomes uh, his, in his descendants, there's a line that leads to Christ. And that was, that was the son that he had to bring forth. He had to bring forth this son that would have descendants that would lead to Christ because everything in the Old Testament pointed to Christ. Okay, so uh, here it is. Uh, and, and first God appeared to him when he was 75 years of age. Mm. And then uh, he went along and he did some lying and cheating and different things, but but God told him, walk perfect before me. Yeah. And so God's seeing him different. He, he's not looking at all the lying he did and all the cheating he did. He, he is not looking at that. So at age 99, God appears to him again. And this time he changes his name and he changes his name to Abraham, meaning father of a multitude, mm. father of a multitude. So what I want you to see, this is the way God operates. God uh, saw Abraham walking per perfect before him, uh, blameless before him, and he changed his name to a father of multitudes because it, not only was Abraham going to be uh, the ancestor of the line of Israel, but he was also going to be the ancestor of the line that led to Christ, and in Christ, multitudes were blessed. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's in Christ, mm -hmm. in Christ, in Christ, multitudes were blessed. So how did God uh, correct the problem? Correct the problem. See, Abraham lacked something that he needed. And God now is bringing forth. He is creating something in Abraham that's going to impact uh, all generations. All generations. Glory to God. I want you to realize All people. you are like God. You're made in his image and you are to be an imitator of God. And so we're going to talk about how did God, what did God do with Abraham? Not only did he change his name to the father of a multitude, he also created something in Abraham. And we see this in Romans chapter four, mm -hmm. verse 17. I'm going to ask Sherry, to read Romans 4, verse 17, and see what God did in Abraham's life. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. 
before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were. Okay. God created something right there. He created, he created a strength in Sarah's room, womb, womb yes. so that she could bear a child. He, he created strength in, in Abraham so he could produce a son, and that son would be an ancestor in the line that led to Jesus Christ. Mm. And so God approached it. He, he didn't he didn't beat Abraham on the head with all of his sin. He mm. told him to walk before me perfect. He saw him perfect and he created something in his life. Mm. Mm. Now, that's what this message is about tonight. Oh, it's that's... about creating what is needed is. in your family member's life. Woo, that's good. Let me say it again. That's good. This message is about you mm. being spiritual, creating what is needed in the life of your family member and members. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's hallelujah. This is really the essence of the message tonight. Mm, mm. It's about you meeting a need of a family member or a co-worker or, or a child or, or a parent. You meeting a need, and I'm not talking about a natural need. I'm mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. you doing it spiritually. Hallelujah. You who are spiritual, restore. restore. Okay, so you've got mm. you've got a family member, and the family member needs something. Each family member needs something that only you can provide. And, mm. and I'm not talking about money and I'm not talking about natural things. It may be that you need to provide peace to them. See, if you carry peace, you can impart peace. peace. If you carry uh, joy, you can impart joy to your family member. Your family member uh, that, that maybe has created some problems in your life. Maybe it's been uh, uh, some brought some hardship uh, in your life. And mm -hmm. uh, let's don't look at them as if they've sinned because Jesus Christ, see, has done away with the sin problem. We need to do something in their life. There's something lacking in their mm -hmm. life that only you can provide. See, one time, uh, this really impacted my life. I had a spiritual son that called me and, and said, uh, uh, Freddie, I, I need to know something from the Lord. And he said, I had to come to you to get it. That I couldn't, he, wasn't going to, he wasn't going to tell me himself. Mm -hmm. he, I had to go through you because you are my spiritual father. Uh, and, and I needed you to tell me. He, he wanted that information that I needed for this problem I'm dealing with. It has to come through you. Okay, so what I'm saying to you is that you have something that your family member needs. Mm -hmm. It may be a child. It may be a spouse. It may be a sibling. You have what mm -hmm. you who are spiritual restore. restore. Okay, now I, I've, I've talked about three ways, uh, destroy or remove problems, but we're really focusing on creating something that hasn't existed. Mm -hmm. So you don't look at the people as all of their problems because you look at them through the eyes of Jesus and through the eyes of Jesus mm -hmm. and through the eyes of God, God sees them covered in the blood. He sees them covered in the mm -hmm. blood of Jesus. He sees that person in Christ, okay? Mm -hmm. But that person may need something. They may still need something that only you can provide. And, and, and I'm not talking about natural things because I'm talking about spiritual things. Right. You who are spiritual restore such a one. You create with your words, with your prayers, with, with, with your uh, intercession with God for that person. You create what they need. Maybe they need something. Mm -hmm. now, now see that, Again, there was something that the Holy Spirit dealt with me this week uh, that caused me to 
open up to this particular message. And that is, I was praying for someone who had sickness and I told the sickness to go. Okay, I told it to go because I have a, a I have scriptural basis for that. You know, in uh, um, Acts chapter 19, verses 11 and 12, it says the uh, uh, anointed handkerchiefs were laid on people and the, and the sickness mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. they, it, they just weren't left. They weren't just healed. The sickness left. Hallelujah. Oh, okay, so I, so I had the um, authority uh, from the word of God, and, and I could call it to be removed like Mark eleven twenty three, 23, which I quoted earlier. I could have just told it to be, I did. I told the sickness to be gone, but when I did, I had a check in my spirit, an unction from the Holy Spirit, and, and I didn't have peace about it because I knew I hadn't said the right words. I hadn't done the right thing. Mm -hmm. I, not what was needed at that point. And what the Holy Spirit was leading me was to say, I'm creating healing in that person's life. I needed to create. So I, so I spoke, I proclaimed, healing come, healing be mm -hmm. in this life. Mm -hmm. So it, it wasn't me demanding sickness to be gone, sickness to be destroyed. It was me under the power and guidance of the Holy Spirit doing a creative miracle calling forth healing. It's the same thing with you and your <coughs> family, your family member or members. You have something they need. You can That's create right. something they need and only the Holy Spirit knows. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason I want to bring this up is that if we look at the word of God, it's like a tension bridge. You, you know, there are wires holding things together, keeping that, uh, but there's some, some different ways that they're pulling back and forth, but that makes the bridge strong because you've got wires over here down to the uh, bridge and you've got wires coming down here. It's called a tension bridge. That's kind of like the word of God is. Uh, if we look at Proverbs 26, verses 4 and 5, verse 4 says, do not uh, speak to a fool in his folly, mm -hmm. or you'll be like him. And mm -hmm. verse uh, 5 says, speak to a fool in his folly, mm -hmm. or lest uh, he will mm -hmm. have his own, he'll be caught up in his own conceit. Right. So look at those two verses. One says, do not mm -hmm. speak to a do fool in his folly. The other one says, Speak to a fool in his fault. Which one are you going to do? You only know by the unction of the Holy Spirit, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That's why the Holy Spirit is so important. You can find a verse in the scriptures uh, to relate to any issue, but it may be the wrong verse. Mm -hmm. what, if it, what if you see a fool in his, in his folly and, and you say, well, it says, don't speak to him. So I don't speak to him. But there's another verse that says, speak to him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what are you going to do? You can only be led by the Holy Spirit. And, and that's what happened to me the other day. I, I said one thing, but I knew immediately when I said it, I had said the wrong thing because of the unction in me. See, uh, Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace of God rule, rule. in your heart. Oh, and, and so if I don't have peace in my heart, then, then I've got to make some change. I, Something has gone wrong. You need to have peace in your heart about what you're doing. Follow the Holy Spirit. Now, I know a lot of people uh, say, oh, I don't need the Holy Spirit. But how can you, how, mm -hmm. what are you going to do when you see a fool in his folly? Mm -hmm. you, you don't know. <laughs> and, and it may be wrong, whatever you do. It says, don't speak to him. And it says, speak to him. You only know by the Holy Spirit and the unction of the Holy Spirit within you. Same thing for your child. Same thing for your spouse. How are you going to address, how are you going to deal with that person? You have got to be led by the Holy Spirit and you've got to operate like God. Imitate God. What? How does God, how does God operate? Look through his eyes. He looked through his eyes. He sees the blood. Mm. He sees the blood of Jesus. It's, it, it's your family member. You're in Christ. So you've got to deal with your family members in Christ. 
because you are in Christ. So you don't step out of Christ to deal with your family mm -hmm. member. You have to mm -hmm. stay in Christ to deal with your family member. And the way we're going to deal with what they need is by creating it, mm -hmm. by creating it, because you're going to operate like God, operate like God. And God calls things that be, be not, not as though they were. Mm -hmm. See, when I talked to that, uh, that, to that sickness uh, and, and I said to be gone, it, it was something that existed. And, and so uh, it wasn't that it didn't exist. It existed. Sickness existed. And I told it to be gone. So I had done the wrong thing by the unction of the Holy Spirit. I knew it. But then when I spoke healing, see, I, I, created, I created something that did not exist. And in mm. Romans 4, 17, God calls things that be, be not, not as though they were. So he's bring, He's creating and bringing into existence something that was needed. That's what you, your role is. At, you're the spiritual person in this relationship I'm talking about. You are the spiritual person. You're the one that's going to have to restore it. You, you don't expect them to correct all of their problems and to get themselves out of their mess. They cannot get mm -hmm. themselves out of their mess. They need the power of the Holy Spirit. They need the authority of Jesus Christ. And where does it reside? It resides in you because you are spiritual. So we're, we're talking Hallelujah. about how to work with our family members, our loved ones, our uh, people who are close to us, we know they have problems. We even know, ourselves. And even ourselves. This applies to you too. You're in. You're under the blood. You're under the blood. Yes. We've got to be like God and create what is needed. That's your role. It's to create. It's not to criticize. It's not to judge. It's not to condemn. It's not to tell people what they need to do or not need to do. Your role is to create, create what they need. Hallelujah. And you might see when I, I look at relationships, I, I've always thought, well, I'm going to bring into this relationship what I have. Mm -hmm. I, I've always looked at that. I'm going mm -hmm. to bring what I have. But now I'm telling you, take it to a higher level and, and let's create what they need. Let's Ooh, look at hallelujah. what they need. Now, let's don't look at what I have. Don't look at what you have. Look at your family member. Let's say your spouse mm -hmm. or, or your child. Uh, look at not what they, not the wrong they're doing, but you look at what they need because you are the one who can bring what they need into your marriage into your relationship with your child, mm -hmm. you can bring what they need, what that person needs. You bring it in. Now, you might say, well, I don't have it. Well, of course you don't have it. It's by the grace of God. It's by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. It's by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus made something, an important statement. He said, if you can only believe, all things are possible mm -hmm. to those, those who believe. believe. Now, the person, I've asked you to think about a person in your family situation that has a problem and has you've got issues with. Uh, and so be thinking about that person. And there's still, it's all under the blood because you are in Christ. And so you have been given authority to restore that person. And you, the way you do it is by creating what they need. Um, see, if there's a need, God's willing to meet it. And if there's faith, he will do it. Let me say that again. If there's a need, God is willing to meet it. And if there is faith, he will do it. Hallelujah. So, so we have to know what the need is. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to know what the need is? Well, it's by the Holy Spirit. It, it may not even be by their words. If you ask that person, oh, what, do you, what do you need from me? Uh, they may not be able to verbalize it. They may be, not be able to tell you, mm. but there is somebody who can tell you. Yes, that knows and, all things. That knows all things and knows the truth, all mm. the truth. And will show you, and that 
is the person, the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will show you what they need. You are the spiritual person who can restore uh, anybody in your family. You can restore them uh, of any wrongdoing. Did you? Mm -hmm. I want Sherry to read that again. Galatians chapter 6, verse 1, any wrongdoing. Brothers and sisters, even a person, even if a person is caught in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual are to restore such a person in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you are not tempted as well. Okay, so any this is any wrongdoing. It could be little. It could be big. It doesn't matter. It's any wrongdoing. You're the spiritual person who is to restore. And how do you restore? It's by believing. It's by faith. It's by believing. And, and you don't have to have it. You don't have to have what they need, but you can create it because you're like God. You are to imitate God and you can call things that be not as though they were. So mm -hmm. your spouse mm -hmm. needs something that only you can provide. And your child needs something that only you can provide. And your parent uh, or your siblings need something uh, that only you can provide. So I'm not saying what, what you provide for the child is the same thing you provide for your sibling. And the same thing you provide for your sibling is not the same thing you provide for your spouse. So your spouse needs something. Your child needs, needs something, something that you can supply. And, and you may not have it. You may, if you look in your uh, bag that you carry around with you, you, you may not see it there. Mm -hmm. Where is it? Well, it's got to be created. Yeah, it's got, to it's be got created. because you have the power hmm. like God to imitate God. You can create what that person needs. You can create uh, and, and so it's not about, well, let's just wait until this person gets all of their act together. Let's, you know, until they get cleaned up and uh, let's uh, just wait until we see all of these changes. No, you have to speak to the spirit man mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. because God in eternity saw where we were today. He saw in eternity that person and, and he has a purpose for that. So you begin to speak to that spirit man, that inner man, because they, that person uh, that I'm talking about today, your family member, has a destiny and a, a purpose, mm -hmm. a purpose that God uh, planned for them and, and, and a destiny that they are to fulfill. And you begin to speak to the spirit man and, and then that let that spirit man grow, uh, rise up and, and you meet the need that they have, uh, you meet it spiritually because, and, and you again, you might not have it to begin with, but you create it. You create what is needed. Mm -hmm. And by the Holy Spirit and the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you can find out what their need is. And again, they may not even know what their need is. But remember, Jesus said all things are possible to those who believe. And you begin calling things into existence that haven't existed before. See, God mm. looked at darkness. Oh, da, da, and, hallelujah. And chaos was over the face of the earth. And he, and he said, light be and light was. Hallelujah. He created light with his word. And by faith, we understand that the world was created by the word of God. So God spoke his word uh, and, and light came into existence. That's who you are. You are spiritual. You mm -hmm. are to imitate mm -hmm. God. You be like God. Create, mm -hmm. create what your family member needs. Uh, find out yeah. from the Holy Spirit what they need and then create it with your faith and with your words by speaking uh, to the spirit man, to the inner man, Speak to the inner man. This is not about judging people. This is not about condemning people. This is about meeting their need because mm -hmm. you who are spiritual restore, restore such a one. one. Thank you for being here today. Hallelujah.